now that this is all dry, let me test it one more time for fit here. You notice it doesn't quite fit yet, but we'll take care of that as we go. You'll see in the end, it'll fit perfectly. So let's get on with our rocks now and start staining those. I've got the colors that are in the kit already diluted, and we're just going to dab them on. The yellow and the brown are diluted as a 2 to 1 ratio. The black you do a little bit weaker, more like a 4 to 1. And the black just kind of fills in all the cracks and crevices and strengthens the whole look of the whole thing. It gives it a, an overall blurred in look to, to get the colors to work all together with each other. There, now that we've got the rocks done, the next thing of course would be to move on and do the earth undercoat. And uh, you mix this in a 50-50 situation, so mix that up and we're ready to go. You notice when I'm doing this, I'm not just stroking it on, I'm dabbing it on as well. And that just breaks up the pattern so that it doesn't look as though you have brush strokes in there. It looks a little bit more natural. Did you know descendants of the Mesa Verde ancestral Pueblos include the Hopi of Arizona and the 19 Rio Grande Pueblos of New Mexico? Looking pretty good. Now, we just have to clean up our mess, let this dry, and then we can proceed further on with doing the foliating. Well, let's get into the grasses now, making it actually look pretty here. Um, spray down a little bit of the cement and then just shake the grass up on top. Did you know Mesa Verde National Park contains 4,000 known archaeological sites, 600 of which are cliff dwellings? It's got a forest green in there that's very, very dark. Almost a black, more like a rich soil. So let's use a little bit of that as well, especially around the rocks. Now another thing you're going to want to use is the talus that they give you. Um, if you want to match the rocks that you have right in here, what you do is with your leftover dyes that you used for the rocks here, take and pour the uh, talus in the cup and then pour the dye on top of it and let it sit for about an hour or so and then drain it off and let it dry on a paper towel and it'll come up the same color as you see right here. So we'll take some of that if you want to make it a little bit smaller, this is really interesting here. Take and shake a little bit into the bag and just very carefully hammer them down and they'll break up into a smaller size that you can use on the layout. You notice now that there are all kinds of smaller sizes in there and sands. So now you can take your spray, spray again, and we'll put some of it there. Want to take the real dark one again and shake just a little of that into it as well. There's dirt and everything mixed together as they're coming down a hillside. Stand back a ways and just give it the fine mist so that it comes down, saturates it, and wets it down enough to hold it in place. Now another thing we're going to do, you have some foliage fiber that's also in there. Take just a little bit of that and stretch it all out. And we'll put it in place here where we already have a little bit of the hillside covered. Give it a light spray. Now, I'll take a little bit darker grass than what we've been using on this one and shake it on. This gives it a lot of depth. It's really fun to work with and gives it a nice look. The next thing we want to get into is putting some bushes in and it gives you some clump foliage to represent bushes. Now you really do a good job of that. Take some of your project glue, and you don't have to worry about the white either because it's gonna dry back a dull matte finish. You'll never see it when it dries. There, now that we've got the bushes and all the grasses on, uh, the one thing it is missing is trees. And I'm gonna show you how to do that, and we'll do that right now. I wanna show you one that I, a tree that I did a little earlier. 
Using your imagination, you can come up with some very unique situations, and I'll show you how to do that. Take off a little bit of the foliage fiber, just kind of pull it from all directions so you have a puffball made up. And depending upon how big and how branchy you get for your twig, that will determine how many you want. Take your spray cement and spray it down. And then what I do is I'll put a piece of paper towel here to collect the excess so that I can do it again and again. Just shake the evergreen onto the fiber and then set that aside to dry. And do the same thing with the other ones. Did you know historians aren't really sure why the ancestral Pueblones left their homes? Some believe it could be a 23 year drought while others believe it could be the community grew faster than the culture could handle. Now we'll let these dry and while those are drying I've already made some up ahead of time. We'll start making one of the trees for you now. Taking the twig that we got out of our backyard and a little bit of the project cement. Just put a little bit on the branches and add one of your balls to that and then do the same thing to the next one. Remember, you don't have to worry about that white because it's going to go and uh, become a matte finish for you. And then you've got a tree that all you need to do is let it dry. Then you can place it on your model when it dries. It's time to put the trees on. And uh, you want to look at where you want to put things. You might want to put one up here. Now, in order to get it in, you're going to want to use something big enough to put a hole in there for it. Uh, I'm going to be using an awl, but you can use like at the end of a screwdriver, an awl, maybe a nail or something like that. And just very carefully make a hole. Take a little bit of the project glue. And slide your tree in place. Let's put another one over here on the side. Oh, that's going to look nice when it's finished. We're going to be cutting in the, uh, for the dwelling now to make it fit in there right. And we'll get onto that in a second. I've already cut a few, one or two spots here. And as you can see, it's still not quite fitting in there properly. It's hanging up a little bit right here. So let's mark this a little bit with the awl. We'll take it back out. Make a few minor cuts here. And shove them in. Now that we've got that cut, it should fit just a little nicer. That's looking pretty good now. So in order to get this to blend, what we're going, what we're going to do is take our project glue, put a little on the model, on the base, and now we're ready to slide it into position. Now it's just a matter of putting a little bit more around the base here. Now I can take some of the Palace that we have left over here and put it around. Doesn't that look great? Let's get this out of the way. Bring the ladders back into play here. Learn how to build this adobe dwelling by watching Papa Tom's adobe dwelling video. Boy, I get excited all over again, just like a little kid. And I get something that looks this nice. As you can see, it really looks good. Looks great. Of course, now remember, you got to take credit for this, so... Go get your A.